Welcome to 2017. Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great kickoff for this year. I'm really excited to be with you today because this is going to be part of the premise of the podcast that I chose to do for the first year of 2000, first week of 2017. So thank you for being with me. Thank you for being, first of all, thank you for being such an avid, amazing follower of the Celebration of You series. You see, that series was a mission put on my heart a few years ago, being so fortunate and blessed to hear incredible stories of amazing people that may be living ordinary lives to many of us, but what they're really doing is choosing to live extraordinary lives because of the stories that they have, that they've embraced, the adversity that they have overcome, the trials, the tribulations, and I just felt burning on my heart. Boy, if the world could hear these stories, just imagine the hope that could be given, the inspiration and the empowerment that maybe just one person, one person out there could be touched by this. So I want to thank all of you. And I thought I would kick off this podcast by saying we do have a few top favorites of the year. Yeah. So we're so many great guests and I'm very excited about what's in store for 2017, but I wanted to really recognize that in the midst of so many diverse and beautiful stories, the top Holly favorites, because they were the ones most listened to. So I'm going to give a quick shout out Monique Coleman and her challenge and overcoming such immense adversity and showing and proving to us that miracles can happen if you believe in abundance and you trust your faith. Allie Brown, who made a big choice to make a big shift in the direction of her business and putting her family first. And although that was fear, look at the blessings that have come. Helene, Helene Pullman up in Canada, I can't thank you enough for sharing your story because every time someone listens to it, it still changes a life. She has overcome such tragedy and is alive today with against many odds. And with that, she's finally this last year has chosen to spend the rest of her life helping others to embrace such tragedy, tra tragedy. So with that, I just wanted to give a shout out because those were some of the top three. There's been several amazing guests. Um, there's a few that have been like focusing on a career and how to become a mother and, and embrace not losing yourself in the process. And some great leaders have shared amazing examples. Some of the men out there, I think, Thank you for sharing incredible stories of going out there and being willing to take a risk. So thank you to all of the great shows, guests, and listeners. But what I want this podcast to turn into for you, and what I want today to be, is I want you to begin to embrace 2017. And with that, I'd like you to pause and celebrate 2016. You know, one of the things that I'm going to share right now, and actually I'm going to be really honest, I'm going to give you heartfelt wisdom from only my experiences and because I've had the privilege of interviewing and talking to so many people around the world. And what I have realized is that, you know what, I could talk about generations. Yes, I'm the end of the baby boomers and the way that we embrace life and then the X, the Gen X and now the millennials. But you know what, gang, I'm going to be really honest with you. At the end of the day, I really don't care how old you are and I don't care how educated you are because all of that are labels. And I feel like going into 2017, are you willing to let go of labels? Are you willing to let go of labels on ourselves? Because man, we're good at it, aren't we? That list from last year, all those things that you've had on that list that you were going to do and those great goals from 2016. And I would love to know how many of you sat there over the last few weeks and looked at those goals and revisited them. And basically you should on yourself. S H O U L D should have done that. Should have done this. Didn't get to that. Never got to that. And what you saw was failure. What you focused on is what you didn't get accomplished. How about pausing and without a list in front of you, actually throw out the list. I'm going to have you throw out the list completely. I would like you to pause and think about, look who you are today and who you were a year ago today. What can you celebrate? What have you faced in the last year? And maybe you faced a lot of uncertainty. Maybe you faced a lot of change, your own personal trials and tribulations, or maybe professionally, you've had to face a lot of change. Who have you become in that process? 
Who have you become because you have fought through the change? You have overcome. You know that old saying, when faced with adversity, do you get bitter or better? How did you get better this last year? What do you have to celebrate? Instead of looking at the list and what you didn't get done, let's focus on what who you are and what you did do. I guarantee you, you came through something and maybe you were faced with unexpected things that were completely out of the clear blue. I think many of us are. You have no idea what next year is going to bring, but what do you do with it? What did you do this last year that you can be proud of? Because you see the stuff you're faced with is what actually gives you great character. It's who builds you to be this rich, amazing person. It's the person you are and the resilience that you have. So instead of just moaning about it and thinking about what an awful year you have or all these things you didn't get done, let's celebrate who you are. Did you overcome a health hurdle? Did you have, did you help a personal friend or a family member through a really tough time? You know, you gave them hope, you gave them love, you gave yourself love. Did you get an accomplishment? Did you, did you achieve something in your personal life and in your professional life? I hear from so many great people that, wow, you actually did it. You lost 20 pounds. You took on the challenge of being diagnosed with diabetes and you overcame it because you put into life healthy habits. You stop living every day on the hamster wheel. And you made a shift in your life to put your family first or your personal life first and started taking care of yourself and realized that nobody's going to die. See, that's the stuff I want you to focus on right now. Celebrate your wins from 2016. And those wins don't have to be checking off a list. I'd love for you as you're listening to this podcast, or maybe when you're done, I would like you to take a few minutes and honor that for yourself because that's the challenge I'm going to ask you to take in 2017. The motto for this year in my world is joy is a choice and it's about self-love and self-acceptance. I didn't need to make a list. I didn't need to write that down. But what I do need to do is be very intentional about paying close attention to the things I'm doing. That's my intention for this year. Joy is a choice. Am I allowing other people and other circumstances and situations to zap the joy for me? Because you see, going into this year, you have permission. Yes, did you hear that? You have permission. You don't need someone else to give you permission to own your life and choose joy. But you can darn well let everyone zap it from you. And guess what? All you've done is given the power away. Because you see, God put each of us here on this earth. I truly believe we were put here by a divine being much greater than us to be created to fulfill a destiny. What is your soul's highest calling? Do you know? Have you spent any time thinking about that? Or are you already dreading this first week back at the old thing again. I've had a couple of people go, wow, the holiday's over and it's right back to the old thing. And I'm like, what is the old thing? You have a choice. It can be the old thing, or you can choose to look at it through a different set of glasses. What's the new thing going to be? Are you going to choose joy? Are you going to choose to be around people that bring out the best of you? Or are you going to continue to spend your time and your precious hours with people that zap the life out of you? I mean, I could spend hours talking about this because I have lived years in that world. I have lived many, many years, more than you want to know, and I am here to say that I could share with you all of the stories. We all have them, right? All of the ups and downs. There's been the great years, the great days, the great months, and I know a lot of you think that I'm Hollyanna, right? Like I get people that go, oh, you're just always so happy. You know what? I choose to be happy. I have my bad days too, but I choose happiness and I choose joy. Because what I learned many years ago is that no one gets to take that away from me. And when I let them, the only one left dying on the side and shriveling up is me. Because I've let other people's poisons infect me. And they seem to go on just fine. So although that's kind of hardcore right now, and to think about that in that essence, I want to get you, I think, real. Going into 2017, you have a choice Choose self-love, choose self-acceptance, and with that comes choosing who and how you spend your time. 
You know, it's interesting when I said, think back on the list of what you had hoped to accomplish last year. Maybe some of you have accomplished a lot of it, but I know talking to people that many of us are looking back and thinking more of what we didn't accomplish. So going into 2017, can you make a vow? Take the challenge with me and make a personal vow that you are going to stop berating yourself. You're going to stop being so self-critical. You're going to stop looking at everything you lack and everything you don't have. And instead of spending the year trying to fill it, all the empty gaps that you think you have, why don't you look at all the magnificence that you have? Look around you. Do you have your health? If you can have your eyes to see and your legs to walk, if you have your ears to hear because you're listening to this right now, when is the last time you paused to thank, just to be in a grateful attitude for what you do have? Do you have a home to live in? I think during the holidays, we spend a lot of time focusing on and realizing the essence of gratitude. And there's many people that don't have any of the above. What do you have to be grateful for? Do you have a beautiful family? Are you blessed to have people that love you and care about you? Are you blessed to have someone in your life that leans to you, that looks up to you? Did you forget the power you have to be instrumental as an inspiration to the people around you? You see, you can't really give love when you're an empty, overdrawn bank account. And I've been there. How are you feeling right now on this day? Are you an empty, overdrawn bank account? That's where self-love starts. And you can't wait for others to fill you up. I know, I've tried, and many of you have probably done the same thing. We wait for others to fill us up. We wait for others to give us the love or the appreciation that we need or we think we want. But the longer we wait, the more loss we feel. Really, it starts with you. And there's no love to give unless you can fill yourself up and be a beacon of love. So it starts with self-love and self-acceptance. And to stop berating and stop being so self-critical. Pause today. And I'd like you to think about what beautiful gifts do you have? Look at who you are and how you're showing up in this world. Look at how others depend on you. Look at who the magnificent person you were put on this earth to be. And then pause and take this next challenge and vow to yourself that you will spend some time thinking and reflecting on your soul and your highest calling. We all have one. But many times, many of us, it's so buried in all the shoulding. I should do this. I should do this first. I should do that for this person. I should take care of my kids. I can't dream again because I got to make sure everybody else is taken care of. Well, you know what? It's never too late to dream. You can dream again. And this year is about dreams and dreams are what create plans. So if you're one of those people that love to plan, then start with dreaming. Let the dreams start the plans. But it's never too late to dream, gang. I truly believe that we never, ever, ever get too old to dream. And you want to know the gift you can give to the world around you? You can give them the gift of dreaming. Because when you begin to dream, you begin to live in a place that people are like, what are you doing? You've got an energy. You have a spark. You have joy. I want what you have. They want your Kool-Aid. And the reality is, you just made some choices to live a life that serves your highest calling so you can be the best version of you. I know that's kind of hypocritical because many of us are raised in societies and it doesn't matter what culture. And I love that I have people all over the world that I've become dear friends with. And I know you're listening to this and I want you to know it doesn't matter what language we speak. It doesn't matter how old you are, how educated you are. We are all human beings and every human being has a heart that beats. So let's stop over strategizing everything and let's let go of strategy. And for just a moment going into this new year, pause and get back to the heart of the matter. What's your heart crying out to do? What are your dreams? What are your passions? So that's your challenge. 
You're going to celebrate something from this last year. I want you to reflect and think about a win, something you're really proud of. Even if that meant you were going through some really tough times, look who you are and how you can be starting this year with what you gained from that. And then I want you to think about your soul's highest calling. And you don't need permission from one other person to do that. Stop waiting and asking for other people's permission. You don't need it. God gives you permission to focus on and rediscover your gifts, your talents, and your strengths. Because when you do, you bring the best of you to this world. So stop putting yourself last. I love to say this, and I say this when I'm speaking, so many of you know this. Sometimes you need to be a little selfish so you can be far more selfless. Make that your mission for the next week as you're redefining and rediscovering who you are. Take time to be a little selfish because then you can be far more selfless when you can bring the best of you to this year and to this world and to the people around you, from your loved ones, to your significant others, to your children, to your colleagues, to your teams, to your clients, everyone wins. And then the next challenge, I have four, so there's your two. And the third one is, I'd like you to think about going into 2017. When is the last time you did something ridiculously fun and splurged on you? Well, we typically don't think to do that because we're always thinking about everybody else or we have to wait till everything else is done. No, right now, you're going to think about something ridiculously fun that you would love to do this year. Maybe it's something extreme like going skydiving or doing an extreme trip or maybe it's a simple is going and spending a day alone at a prayer retreat. Maybe it's even simpler than that. It's a few hours of downtime for you. If that's ridiculously fun and that brings you joy, then write it down, post it up on the wall. If you could see my office right now, I have all kinds of things posted around me because I believe in writing it down and visualizing what's next and what do I want to do. So write it down and make a commitment. And then the fourth, this is it, only four things, and you don't need a list to do this. What's one thing you want to get rid of this year? What's one toxic thing? And that could be anything. It could be a bad habit you're in. Maybe it's a bad habit and it's just a matter of getting up and making yourself get up 10 minutes earlier so you can have that quiet time you've been craving. Maybe it's a toxic person that you're realizing you really don't need in your life. You know, there's a beautiful old quote, but the five people you spend your most valuable time with are an indication of who you will become. Are you getting really intentional around the people you spend your time with? I know it's not so easy in the professional world. Sometimes we have to make choices and be with people that eh, maybe don't just fill us up with joy. But you can put boundaries in, you can spend that time, and you can allocate only this amount of time and be done. I have all kinds of tricks and trades for that. So if you want to know more, come join me because I host all kinds of events and I share all these tips and tricks and strategies. But it really doesn't matter what tips I share with you. It starts with you. So that's the fourth one was, what can you get rid of this year? And maybe it's getting rid of commitments that really don't serve you. How are you spending your discretionary time? Are you really spending it the way you want to? Are you giving that time away too? So there's the shift coming into 2017. It starts with self-love and self-acceptance. I choose joy. What do you choose? It doesn't matter the circumstance. We all have a choice. And I leave you with this huge gratitude for being a part of this journey with me in 2017. I'm hosting the first ever virtual retreat this weekend. Can't wait. So excited. Have people that are putting together huge groups in their homes that are going to be live streaming. And I'm so excited and so grateful for that. We'll be hosting another amazing retreat in Scottsdale, Arizona. So please let us know if you're interested. The last one sold out and it was an incredible opportunity to see an amazing group of women come together. And um, I have all kinds of events for men and women. So let us know. Love to hear from you. I would also like to give you a request. And my ask is, my passion for celebration of you series is to celebrate and hear stories of remarkable people that have overcome immense challenge. 
And um, do you know someone? I would love your recommendation. Do you know a story that's beyond amazing and is a story that needs to be shared? I would love for you to let me know someone's story that could be remarkable. And I'd also love for you to share with me if your story is ready to be shared and maybe you haven't shared it yet, let me know. I'd love to be the person to help bring it to life. I thank you all. Have a blessed year. Take the challenge. Take the vow. Choose joy and get ready to soar. Thank you.